Hi, I'm Patrick Bay David, your host of Value Tainment Weekly, and today's question is, who is a better money manager, the private sector and corporations or the public sector and the government? So a lot of times the media takes shots at companies for how little taxes they pay, and I figured why not share with you uh, how much taxes the 10 biggest companies in America paid to the U.S. government in taxes? Number 10, and this, these are numbers according to Forbes, 2012 numbers. Number 10 happens to be Microsoft. They paid roughly $4.6 billion in taxes to the government in 2012. IBM paid 5.3, Berkshire Hathaway paid 6.9, JP Morgan Chase paid 7.6 billion, Conoco Phillips, uh, Phillips paid 7.9, Walmart 8 billion, Wells Fargo 9.1 billion, Apple 14.21 billion, Chevron 20 billion, Exxon Mobil 31 uh, billion dollars in 2012 in taxes. So, so that's a lot of taxes. Some of you may say, I never thought they would have paid that much taxes. That's a lot of taxes they pay every year to the U.S. government. And the question I asked earlier is. Who is better at managing the money? Because every time you and I vote to raise taxes, whatever the new program may be, we're going to come with the health care program, we're going to do this, and it's going to be free. It's never free because we pay for it. The money only comes from you and I, taxes going back to them. If we vote for taxes to go higher, what we're voting for is the fact that the government is better at managing money than we are. Obviously, the government's got a place with military public school in certain areas, but not in everyday life of everything we do. So let me give you an example of a company. I want you to think about this restaurant. We can call it XYZ Company. It's similar to Chili's, Olive Garden, and similar to Applebee's type of a restaurant, where it costs them roughly $1 million to open up each restaurant. And each restaurant that they open up employs roughly 50 employees, part-time, full-time, 50 total employees. And let's just say in 2012, their net revenues was roughly $1 billion, is what they were their net revenues. After everything, their net was $1 billion. And they have to pay roughly 33% taxes on that $1 billion, which is $330 million. They would pay in taxes, which that goes to the government, $330 million in taxes. I want to pose the question, what would happen if we were to keep that $330 million in XYZ Corporation's money instead of that money goes to the government. Let's just kind of take a look at what if this were to happen. If that money was to be kept in XYZ's company, what would they do with the money? Many times we think they're going to go buy Lamborghinis or, you know, big diamond necklaces that's got corporation on there or free enterprise on there. They, 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 they're going to take that money and reinvest the money is what they typically do. So if this company takes that $330 million and they said, we're going to expand and let's open up 330 new uh, uh, restaurants. If they were to take that $330 million that they were going to pay in taxes, now they don't, and they open up 330 restaurants, it's $1 million per restaurant, that's 330 restaurants times 50 jobs per restaurant, which is roughly 16,750 new jobs created in the economy of people making salaries, and... Typically, full-time employees get health benefits. Say 50% is health benefits. That's 8,375 people that now have health benefits, health insurance provided to them through the corporation, free enterprise, private sector. And then let's look at the number of the number of employees we have, 16,750 employees, each if they were to make roughly $20,000 in average of annual salary. Take the lowest person part-time makes 10 grand, the supervisor makes 100,000, let's just say $20,000 on average. If you take 16,750 employees, multiply times 20,000, you know what number you get? You get $335 million of revenues generated through the employees and jobs created. And if we were to say those employees pay 30% in taxes, take the regular taxes they pay, federal, state, and the sales tax, it's still going to taxes regardless, right? If out of the 335, 30% is taxes, that's $100 million of revenues going back into the government. So you may ask the question and say, well, wait a minute, Patrick, $330 million to the government is a lot more than $100 million to the government. No problem. Let's subtract the numbers so we know what we're really working with. 330 minus $100 million leaves us with what? $230 million. So the question becomes, that $230 million in the private sector 
generated 16,750 jobs potentially and 8,400 people on health care, on health insurance from private sector and 330 new restaurants and new shopping centers that brings traffic that helps other surrounding businesses who are local to them as well. Could the government gotten the same exact type of results with that $230 million of creating that many jobs and that kind of traffic? You need to answer that question with the way you vote for taxes, we determine what you think will generate more jobs. So now here's the thing, the difference is this. You may say, well, you know what, Patrick, all the corporations are not gonna take their money and do this and do that and it's not a perfect world in the corporate world and there's no way they're gonna do it and the number's not gonna work out this way. Look, you know how you and I vote for businesses? We vote through the way we spend our money. If we don't like coffee bean because they are changing certain things, where do we go to? We go to Starbucks. If you don't like Burger King, you'll go to McDonald's. If you don't like Quiznos, you go to Subway. You don't like uh, Chevrolet, you'll go to Ford. But we have a choice through free enterprise because the thing that makes free market capitalism, free enterprise, where it prevents monopoly is there's always competition. The biggest monopoly that we really have is the government because when it comes down to the government on how we pay our tax, we don't have a choice. That's the part that there is no choice. On this side, there is a choice. On the other side, there isn't a choice. Because here's a question for you. Did you have a say in any of these things that the government spent money on? And how do you feel about the way the government spent money on these things? Department of Health and Human Services plans to spend $500 million on a program that will seek to solve the problem of five-year-old children that can't sit still in a kindergarten classroom. Wait a minute. $500 million to find out why a five-year-old can't sit still. I don't care if we spend a trillion dollars. Do you really think we can make a five-year-old sit still? I don't know about that. Here's another one. The federal government once spent $30 million on a program that was designed to help Pakistani farmers produce more mangoes. Look, I like mango just as much as the other person. I love the mango juice I can get at Jamba Juice. But you know what I like more? I like more Americans having jobs than us having more mangoes in Pakistan. I think that's what's more important to you and I than mangoes in Pakistan. The federal government spent $25 billion every single year maintaining federal buildings that are either unused or totally vacant. Let me ask you a question. What would happen if those buildings were, were owned by private uh, uh, companies? You know what they would have done? One of two things. They're either going to sell it to somebody else that'll put it to use, or number two, they're going to do what? Lease it to somebody that'll put it to use. But there's no way they're going to spend $25 billion a year wasting their money. You and I, we're paying for that ourselves. U.S. farmers are given a total of $2 billion each year to not farm their land. Does that make any sense? I'm a farmer. You're giving me money to not farm my land. And you know who's giving it $2 billion? You and I are. So my message today is very simple. All I'm encouraging you to do is, the next time it comes for you and I to vote for a program that's going to raise taxes, all you and I are doing when we vote that way is we're saying the government is better at managing our money by giving them taxes than free market or free enterprises and the private sector is. That's all we're saying. But what I'd like to see more, probably just like yourself, I want to see more jobs in our economy. I meet too many people that don't have jobs that are good people wanting to take care of their wife and kids. They need more jobs. And history has proven to us over and over and over again, private sector is the best at producing jobs for people. The best, and I've worked for government and I've worked at private sector and I've owned my own business. Private sector is the best at producing jobs. It's my message of the week to you and please be sure to subscribe and share this video. Yeah.